Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Kurt Prenzler was elected Madison County Treasurer on November 2nd, 2010. He is the first Republican to be elected to that office since John Shimkus in 1990 and 94. Mr. Prenzler has not held any previous elected office prior to his election as Treasurer. He pledged during his campaign to reduce the size and budget of the Treasurer's office within 30 days of taking office and says that he's accomplished that task. Mr. Prenzler has refused to take the 3% pay increase that was scheduled for December 1st, 2010, and has refused to join the Madison County Pension Program. Today, we'll be discussing the inner workings of the Madison County, Illinois Treasurer's Office and its new treasurer, Kurt Prenzler. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Lee. Just before we went on the air, I asked you a question about um, if uh, John Shimkus, who's the congressman in the, from the 19th district in Illinois, he had been the uh, previous treasurer, if you'd had contact with him, and you said that you had. Yes, uh, since the election was November 2nd, and that following Monday, I had lunch with Congressman Shimkus, and he schooled me on ethics. And uh, that was a very good, uh, that was essentially the focus, and and just explaining uh, different ins and outs of the offices. And, and so Congressman Shimkus has been very helpful. To those people who are unfamiliar with um, the Madison County tre uh, uh, Treasurer's Office, because this program is throughout the metro area, um, there were some issues that, uh, which we're gonna get into in a little bit, but there were some issues, weren't there, uh, that the newspapers had picked up on uh, regarding a previous treasurer. That's correct. Okay, well, we'll get to that in just a minute. First, I just want to do a little bit of bio work with you. One, why did you want to be the uh, treasurer of Madison County? Well, that's a good question. I've, I've, all of my life, I've been in the private sector. I'm a CPA, um, graduated from University of Illinois, um, and I've, I've always worked in business and finance. And, but I just, uh, like so many people, have been, uh, have been frustrated with how I've seen things uh, to be done, uh, and particularly in the treasurer's office in Madison County, there were issues. And uh, I'm not a cynic about local county government. Uh, on the campaign trail, so many old timers would say, Kurt, it's always been like this and it's always going to be like this. And I just <laughs> didn't accept that. Uh, I am a native of Bloomington, Illinois, and I know that most counties in Illinois run pretty well and uh, without too many uh, egregious issues and I knew that it just could be done a lot simpler and a lot better and that's why I ran. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the egregious issue to which you're referencing um, there the and, and we've got to be careful here because I believe there's still an ongoing investigation. There is. is there not? So we don't want to make any accusations here or point any fingers but according to newspaper reports there was some issue involving a former treasurer um, and the sale of properties that hadn't paid their real estate taxes. Is that correct? That's correct. And so this is so, you, you so, go on. So uh, bear with me because this is somewhat of a complicated issue. But in the treasurer's office, the primary job of the treasurer's office is to send out the tax bills and to collect the taxes. So in Madison County, the Madison County Treasurer's Office sends out about 130,000 uh, tax bills. And then uh, through that tax collection, they, they collect that money. And then at the end of the cycle, they have about 2,500. And this number has been pretty much true over the years. About 2,500. Out of those 130,000, about 2,500. 130,000, those are parcels? Those are parcels, in the that's Ma correct. In Madison County. Okay. 130,000 parcels in Madison County. And then at the end of the tax cycle season, 2,500 are not paid. Mm -hmm. and so about two, not even 2%. A little under two percent. That's right. That's right. And uh, so the what the but the levy has been established to collect all of that money. And so right. therefore, in the last uh, uh, at the last uh, in this tax cycle, we were owing about four and a half million dollars. So every year, year in and year out, the every county in the state of Illinois has what they call a tax auction, and this mm -hmm. provides an opportunity for uh, tax buyers 
to come in and to pay those taxes. They're like substitute taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So they, they come in and they pay those taxes for those 2,500 tax bills. Now, why so would the people who didn't pay? That's right. right. And you're trying to make up so that the government has as much money as they thought they were going that's to have? That's right. So that the library district or the school district has all the money that they, they levied. Okay. And so this has happened. This is nothing unusual. This happens year in and year out. Now, the quid pro quo is why would a tax buyer take his money and pay someone else's tax bill? Well, in exchange for a rate, okay? And uh, the Illinois state maximum is 18%. And so, so what happens- So they get interest on the money that they've, they've right. loaned out basically that's to the correct. county. And that's why, the, that's the business of these tax buyers. They, they pay tax bills for people and ex in, in return, they get an interest rate. And who now, pays this interest rate back at the, the end? The tax payer. Uh -huh. Most taxpayers who are late don't lose their homes. Most of them uh, end up paying those late taxes, and then they pay additional penalties, and then they. But they're pay not an paying you. Rate. They're paying. That's they're correct. paying the person who put money out in their substitution. That's correct. Technically, okay. they take a cashier's check to the county clerk's office, but that money goes to the tax tax buyer. Okay. Right. Now, in all Illinois, all of 102 Illinois counties, they have a tax auction and they begin the auction at 18%. And they have a, they have a bidding process where they begin at 18 and they bid that rate down. So for example, in recent years, uh, uh, other counties have achieved interest rates under, under 5%. They begin at 18, and mm -hmm. it depends on the property. If it's a small bill, no one's interested. If it's a bill of only $100, the tax buyers may not be interested. But, um, but many of them, so it just depends on the free market operating. But what was happening in Madison County was very unique. First of all, there were only two counties that I could identify four years ago when I did my research. Only two out of 102 counties in the state of Illinois where treasurers were taking political donations from tax buyers. Now immediately that, uh, you probably don't host the program, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? But I think any fifth grader would know that if you take political contributions from a tax buyer and now you're conducting an auction of tax buyers, you are no longer free of any conflicts of interest. Now here's what happened in Madison County, is that for, and, and this was under the administration of, of Treasurer Fred Bathon. So two years ago, there was a tax auction and over 2,500 tax bills were sold at 18% and only eight were less than 18%. Now, that is in complete contrast to what was taking place in other counties. So what was different about Madison County? Number one, Madison's, Madison County's treasurer had taken over $140,000 of political contributions from tax buyers. And number two, what was very, very different was the result. Mm -hmm. And that the result was that, uh, that they were having a tax auction where all the tax buyers were bidding 18%. They would all bid 18. So who won the auction? There was a spotter in the tr in the, from the treasurer's office who would select the winner. Evidently, they had the ability to determine who was yelling 18% quicker First. than the others. Right. So this is the subject of, an, of a federal investigation and a state investigation, as I understand. I really don't have a lot of information about that. But so what I did was I said, I will pledge that I will not take one dollar of uh, political contributions from tax buyers. Now that was hardly a, a difficult promise for me to make because 100 out of 102 Illinois County treasurers were already not taking any money from tax buyers. But then in the last election cycle, uh, Fred Bathon retired at the end of 2009 and uh, uh, the Democrat Party appointed Frank Miles for his term but then, uh, lo and behold, even in his brief tenure of, uh, of about, well, even in, within the first nine months, he had already collected $20,000 or more of money from tax buyers, which, in my opinion, makes the treasurer ethically unqualified to conduct a proper tax auction. So uh, we did use an addition. We used an automat automated uh, software system to do that tax auction and the results. So you've done one we've since done you've one. been elected. On February 23rd, we did one, and the result on a weighted average basis came in at 3.91%. So we went from 18% two years ago 
to less than 4%. Now, who does that, that saves the money of the, the tax, the taxpayer who's late. The owner late. who couldn't afford to That's pay right. the taxes in the first place. That's so right. So instead of sticking them with an 18% bill, they have a just under 4% addition. That's right. Now, I'm a little bit, in terms of the statistics, but I believe the savings, the net savings to these late tax buyers, I'm sorry, late taxpayers, that with these reduced interest rates, I think the savings are in the neighborhood of about $2 million a year. These are the people who are least able to pay at that point. I'm not gonna say they're poor people, they're people for whatever reason cannot pay their taxes on time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so these are, we should not be, uh, you know, the, the treasure should be working for the benefit of these late tax payers mm -hmm. and not for the benefit of the tax buyers. Mm -hmm. This other county is, is, do you know which one it is? St. Clair County. Oh, is, is our the, neighbor. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, uh, so the, the, the treasure has taken political donations from tax buyers. Mm -hmm. So this situation is now, in your opinion, cleared up? Yes. And we're done with that issue. And so hopefully, uh, has the press um, in the east side commented about this? Well, yes, and I think it's been well covered, and uh, 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 particularly, uh, I think uh, the issue was very well covered in the Belleville News Democrat. They did an excellent job of investigative reporting uh, back in the early early fall, and I believe that uh, two of their reporters, uh, Mike Fitzgerald and Brian Brueggemann, have actually received Associated Press awards for public interest. Uh, in fact, they received the, the top award this year. They, I think they'll be receiving that <laughs> award on June, June 9th up at a meeting up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now what's this, uh, uh, when I was introducing you, I said that you hadn't uh, taken a pay raise and you hadn't joined the pension program. What's, what's the point of that? Well, uh, when I was running, what I did is, and what businessmen do is they benchmark. It's, they, they compare with other businesses. So, for example, if you're a fast food restaurant, you'll, you can compare with other restaurants to see how, what percentage that business is paying in electricity or property taxes or, or this, this and that, labor costs. And so what I did as I was running for treasurer is I, I looked at other counties <coughs> and, uh, and determined how many people they had working in the treasurer's office, how many property tax bills they were sending out. And I determined that I could save 30% within 30 days. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. We were able to, uh, what we did is we reduced the staff and uh, we were able to reduce that and, and get that done. And so we have actually reduced, uh, reduced those expenses. I think now the, we're over, certainly we're over 300,000 in the neighborhood of three, over $350,000 less. So that's saving the taxpayers of Madison County money. When you reduce the staff, did you, um uh, apparently, you didn't reduce the effectiveness of your office. That's right. Then. We did not. We would did not reduce any of the services that we provide in the office. So all the services, and I'm satisfied that we're going to be able to do an outstanding job of, of of collecting the taxes and distributing that tax money to the taxing districts. But uh, we can do it less less costly, and that's what businesses do. Businesses are always thinking about how can they pr how can they deliver the, the, the goods and services that they're, they're that they are uh, providing at a lower cost. And in fact, the U.S. Labor Department year after year collects statistics to to find out how more how much more productive the American workforce is. And let's say typically every year in the private sector, we see a two percent productivity increase. That means that uh, private business is able able to produce the same, or f with the same inputs, let's say inputs of 100, they can produce outputs of this year, not 100, no, okay, with the same, with the same inputs, right. they can produce uh, 100 outputs last year and 102 this year. Right. So they've achieved a 2% increase in productivity. And that's because government is not in the market and they're only limited by the amount of taxes that they receive. So. If government oftentimes is permitted to expand, if the money's available, it will be spent. Let me give you an example. In fiscal year 2009, in the, in the Madison County Treasurer's Office, that fiscal year ended, and I'm a CPA, so forgive all the numbers, mm -hmm. but 
uh, the year ending November 30th, 2009, the treasurer's office was under budget, but they were 76 cents under budget. That means that they had spent everything in their budget except for 76 cents. Now, if I take you back to Congressman Shimkus when he was treasurer in his last two years, one year, as I recall, in, in terms of my research, he spent $25,000 less than what his budget was. In another year, he spent about $50,000 less than what his budget. So I think we need to bring that kind of business ethics into government so that if you do have a budget of a million dollars, you just don't, tr your goal is not to spend every last dime and then go to the budget committee the next year and say we need 5% more. That we should do an honest to goodness effort to spend less and mm -hmm. provide the same or better services for less money. Uh, addressing your CPA-ness, um, let's talk a little bit about what happens to the money that you collect. You don't just send it to some bank account or put it in some checking account, right? It, uh, as I understand it, people, uh, the, the county sells it for certain bonds or? See, I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar to be well, able to even ask this question properly, but I remember that there was some issue about bonds that were bought and that it was all bought in the same place that's and correct. that this was so why don't you describe because i can't that's another complicated issue first of all the primary job of the treasurer's office is to collect the property to to, to send out the tax bills and to collect that money from the taxpayers and then to distribute that money to the the taxing districts right. the school districts uh, city governments, uh, uh, public uh, library districts. That's the primary, and we don't, uh, when we get that money, we send it out pretty quickly. Okay. Now, there's another function of the treasurer's office, and that is to invest the county's money, okay? And- uh, What's the county's the county, money? The county has money that it has on deposit. The county has working capital, the county has other funds, and these, are pooled and so uh, this is the portion of the tax bill that's aimed at the county is that what you're referring well, to the county government the county government has many different departments the sheriff's department the right. state's attorney's office the circuit clerk and all in the the, the the highway department and all of these departments have have bank accounts and have funds and, and sometimes they have uh, like a tax automation fund or they have a library fund or different funds and so mm -hmm. The total amount of money uh, when I was sworn in was $105 million, a substantial amount of money. And the treasurer's job is to invest that in a prudent way. Well, what we found, and we're still keeping a very close eye on this, um, Treasurer Fred Bathon had established, as was required by Illinois state law, he appropriately established investment guidelines. And part of these guidelines indicated that that the treasurer's office would not invest in, in bonds beyond a 10-year maturity. Hmm. Now, people think that bonds are really, in some ways, boring and, and that uh, they're not risky. But the fact is, if you buy a longer-term bond, even a treasury bond, and if you buy it at a, at a specific interest rate, if the, interest rates, if the prevailing interest rates go up, that bond that you have purchased with a lower interest rate has lost value in the short term. Of course, if you're assuming no credit risk, that bond will at some point in time mature. But Illinois state law requires that county treasurers invest the county's money, number one, with an eye to safety, number two, liquidity, and number three, yield. So they should. their first priority is safety. Second priority is liquidity and the third priority is yield. For some reason, and we don't know why, the, the treasurer's office before was investing in bonds outside the investment guidelines. Now, as... Um, How far outside? Well, they, they had uh, 40 of the $73 million in, in federal agency bonds. Federal agency are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Federal Home Loan Bank. So when I arrived in the office, we had a purchase, uh, a cost value in the, in the bonds of $73 million, and over $40 million of these bonds were outside of investment guidelines, meaning they had maturities of 12 to 15 years. Mm. Now, because of that, 
when interest rates, when the 10-year Treasury uh, interest rate moved up from the 2.6 to 2.8 range in the fall of 2010 to today where it's uh, maybe 3.35, uh, Chuck, today, uh, that increase has caused these bonds to lose value right. so that we have a, a paper <coughs> loss. Um, if we were to try to sell these bonds today, if we needed the money today, we would be losing in the neighborhood of $5 million. That much? Yeah, so that is, my contention is that, is that uh, first of all, it's clear that the, the former treasurer's office invested those, that invested outside of investment guidelines which is for people in finance, people who work for banks and insurance company. I have no, uh, I've, I've spoken to many people and, and, and I just cannot find any instance of where an investment officer has invested outside of investment guidelines. You're told as, as a person in finance or accounting to invest in, conserve, in, in instruments, say CDs that are, are two years or less. I mean, you just do that. You follow the rules. Now, I will say that those investment guidelines in Madison County that limited the maximum uh, maturity to 10 years, if you compare to other counties, Champaign County, for example, they have nothing invested beyond a two-year maturity. Uh, Lake County up in near north of Chicago, they have $400 million invested in, in nothing beyond a two-year maturity. And here we are sitting with 40, over $40 million of bonds with, mat with maturities of 12 to 15 years. So again, by benchmarking, uh, not only have the investment guidelines been violated, but we are very much out of sync uh, in, with what other, and in St. Clair County, they have $170 million. Only 18, so about 10% of what St. Clair County has, only about 10% of what their treasurer's office is investing is in federal agency bonds, but nothing over five years in maturity. And here we are with these longer term. When we're in longer term bonds, that means that we are exposed to greater interest rate risk. Mm -hmm. And that's just- And you can't get out of these very easily <clears throat> without taking a loss? We're working, we're, we're studying this very carefully mm -hmm. at the present time. This issue was uh, all from the Bathon administration or his no, appointed successor? Very, and thank you for asking that question. The first investment outside of investment guidelines was made on December 30th, 2009, as Fred Bathon was walking out the door. And then it continued and, and increased through 2010. So this was, the, the investing outside of investment guidelines was not in the Bathon administration, but in the Miles administration. Oh, interesting. And he was an appointee? That's true. Mm -hmm. So um, what, uh, I guess what you're saying is that, that Madison County's money is in kind of a, of a bind, but you don't think it's really too serious that you'll be able to work something out? Well, we are studying this uh, and following this very carefully. So we're working on this. I see. Okay. Um, we have something uh, somewhere around five minutes left here in the show. I told you time goes by pretty fast. Um, normally at this point in the show, I turn it to the guest and say, is there anything that we haven't covered that, that you would like to talk about? Well, uh, first of all, you brought up the pay increase aspect. I think it was, it's not fair for me as an incoming treasurer to take a 3% increase in salary when, when I'm reducing the cost of the office. And so that, that is something that I didn't take. And then also, um, I think the issue of, you know, I just didn't feel that it's, it wasn't my goal to, uh, in coming into the treasurer's office, to take a pension. And I think that uh, that's one big issue is that we're looking at, you know, I think in the state of Illinois and other areas too, is examining that entire area because it's a huge cost. And it's a cost that actually Madison County uh, taxpayers can actually see on their tax bills. They can see uh, where their tax money is going. When they get their tax bill, as in years past, I'm not mm -hmm. doing anything different, is that they will be able to see what percentage of their tax money is going to the public schools, what percentage is going to municipalities, what percentage to other districts and the county and this sort of thing. Uh, one additional thing we did is that, uh, again, I'm looking for, for how to do the same job or better for less. And we're saving a total of uh, $30,000 on the tax bill. Uh, as, as I mentioned, we send out 130,000 tax bills, 130,000 parcels in Madison County. Now, we have four payment dates. 
and those this year will be, uh, I believe, July 6th, September 6th, October 6th, and December 6th. Mm -hmm. Now, so you said four? Four. Four. In Madison County, we're one of two counties where we have four payment dates rather than the standard two. Right. And we were sending out four envelopes. Well, most people just threw those em envelopes in the trash. And so this year, what we're doing is we're sending out, uh, we're sending out four stickers. So you can put a sticker on an envelope, and, uh, and that's saving us $15,000. And then also, we're reducing the cost of that envelope so that we're coming under one ounce and we're able to save another 15000 in postage, even though prevailing postage rates are going up. So we also, we just, uh, we're sending out the mobile home uh, tax bill. We send out 2,200 mobile home tax bills, and we will save about $1,400 uh, over last year uh, by doing other little things to reduce the cost of, of sending out those bills. So Your office doesn't um, determine the 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 dollar value of property does it? No, that's done by the assessor. Right. So that's not that's not your responsibility. That's correct. We receive those values from the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, and then then you just apply. Or why don't you explain? You you get a number. A house is determined to be a hundred thousand dollars worth of house. Well, and that and that's the beginning. But we have what we call a tax cycle, and it includes both the assessor's office in the county, and and also the township assessors and then also the county clerk's office, and then the county treasurer's office. And so it begins with the county assessor and, the, and all the township assessors to determine what those properties are, what's the, tr what's the proper value. And then it goes to the county clerk's office uh, to bring in all the levies that, have, the levies that are being assessed by, the, uh, by the, the library district or the school districts. And then what they do is they do the extensions and determine how, how much tax is owing mm -hmm. and there what what we do is we receive those numbers and we print the tax bill and we send those tax bills then to the taxpayer so and that's where this that those percentages that you were talking about that's where that all shows that's up that's right these various taxing districts in a, on average mm -hmm. in madison county what percentage of a tax bill is uh, and we got like one minute here uh what percentage is the schools Oh, now I'm having a difficult time. I mean, we're time. talking like if 60%? It's, if it's 62 or, or 72%, I think it's 62. Yeah, I, I, should, I was going to say, most people don't recognize, yeah. you know, that a lot of folks think that when they get a bill from the county, this is a county bill. But That's in right. fact, most of this money is being distributed to other entities. That's correct. This year, uh, approximately only 9% will go to the county and the rest of the bill, so 90, 91% of that money will go to public schools and other taxing districts. Mm -hmm. uh, very briefly, do you have anything left on your to-do list or are you pretty well caught up? Well, I, I do believe that in business, uh, you're always looking for continuous improvement. And I think the Japanese have a word for that, it's called Kaizen. And they're, they're always looking to continually to improve and so that's definitely what we're looking at. Apparently, we've run out of time. Thank you very much for being Thank with you, us. Uh, to my audience, I've been speaking with Kurt Prenzler. He is the treasurer of Madison County. We'll see the rest of you next week.